right? The diffusers, they're amazing. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I think that's going to be one of my first purchases of the new products is one of the diffusers. Those are amazing. I'm so excited for that. So great, great products, great, uh, just a great morning and great afternoon overall. But let's dive into our workshops. So tonight we are going to be hearing from Dr. Ollie Vanker. He is a crown diamond here out of the U.S., and he's got some amazing credentials. You guys got to hear from him earlier. I don't know if any of you saw. He had some pretty amazing shoes on. I thought I had some cool shoes on today, but I think his are, they're better. We're just going to say that. They're better than mine. But Dr. Venker is amazing. Um, he is a physician for integrative, holistic, anti-aging, regenerative, and olfactory medicine. He also is a fellow in functional metabolic and nutritional medicine and a fellow in integrative oncology. He's a best-selling author and a keynote or an international keynote speaker. So let's go ahead and dive into Dr. Ollie's presentation here. He will be talking to us about unlocking the power of sleep. So join us for this enlightening workshop that delves into the comprehensive science of sleep. Learn how to establish healthy sleep habits and explore the long-term effects of sleep on your overall health. Dr. Ali. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. Not just you in the room, but I know we're going to be seen. This workshop is going to be seen by 10,000s, if not 100,000s in the next few days and weeks. So thank you all for joining, whether it's here, whether it's from home. And um, you're going to learn something today. I hope you already learned something, but you're going to learn some more. So the first, we're going to talk about sleep, right? We did this like little 15 minutes today about sleep. And maybe you heard some words like REM and non-REM sleep and didn't really understand what that means. So we're going to go a little bit into detail and show you really what that all means. So the first thing I need to do is what I missed in my other talk <laughs> is to show you that slide, right? Which basically says, Ollie goes to jail if he does not well. And I always say, if I'm in jail, please send me every day your Ninja Red and I'll be fine. <laughs> no, we're all good. So I think we know this is a kind of boring slide, but a very, very important slide because Young Living needs to protect itself from people like me who just speak from the heart. You know, I don't use teleprompters. I just go with my heart and then sometimes, you know. So if you don't breathe, you die. If you don't drink, you die. If you don't eat, you die. And you may not have known that, but if you don't sleep, you die. And so I want to go under and discuss a few misconceptions here about sleep, right? Because um, you think sleep is a passive process, that nothing happens, right? You go to sleep and it's just quiet. No, it's not. Sleep is really an important time. There's a lot, a lot of things happening while you're sleeping. And then you think just sleeping an hour or less will not have any effect on the next day. It will have a huge effect. One hour less sleep will make you cranky, will make you bad decisions. You, you're going to have you know, bad stuff happening to you, plus all the detox doesn't work. I mean, I'll show you all these things that happen. And then some people think older people need less sleep. Well, I hope you learned this afternoon that older people need more sleep, right? So that's what I'm telling you here. So facts about sleep. Um, sleep, the lack of sleep, will really decrease your performance the next day. There's just no doubt about that. It will decrease your memory, your attention span, it will decrease your processing in your brain and overall brain function. And that, as I told you earlier, will lead to other diseases. Now, more, more facts about sleep. If you have teenagers at home that sleep regularly about an hour less than they should, they're going to lose two years of school just with lack of sleep. They made the test, you're losing two grades worth of intelligence and school if you sleep about an hour less per night. 
It's also interesting to note that just 15 minutes more of sleep is the difference between an A student and a B student. Only 15 minutes, right? It's so important. Now, poor sleep increases cognitive decline. We have more dementia, more Alzheimer. And there are over 70, it's around right now around 90 sleep disorders that are mentioned in the medical books and we treat as physicians. And I thought there's nothing better than to give you a visual. The visual here is the upper picture is the person that sleeps very well and then solves mathematical problems. And you see yellow, red, these are active areas of your brain. And then they took that same person and disrupted the sleep overnight after they did this test. And the next morning they repeated the same test, lower line, nothing. The brain doesn't work. And all they did is disrupt every few hours to sleep, nothing. That's the difference between sleeping and not sleeping or between sleeping and not sleeping well. There's a difference. So again, we have about 70 million, at least, Americans that have sleep problems. And that's an old number, because I'm going to show you some frightening facts that happened in the last three, four years with this pandemic. Um, and again, it's not just the brain that suffers, it's the whole body. You get diabetes, you get heart disease, you get stroke, you get heart attacks, Everything in your body suffers if you don't sleep. So again, one night of missleep in a healthy person will put you in pre-diabetic state. Let me repeat that. One night of missleep puts a healthy person into a pre-diabetic state. So that's one of the reasons we have so much diabetes. It's not just eating the sugar. It's not sleeping enough. Um, of course, people with chronic fatigue are more likely to make mistakes. They make more bad judgment calls during the day. They just make many more mistakes and they eat differently. And I'll show you that again. There's just, the science is full of these kind of studies. But they eat more sugars and bad fats and gain weight. So if you want to lose weight, one of the easiest things you can do is to sleep more than seven hours, at least seven hours. And every one of you who is trying to lose weight and you only sleep four, five, six hours, you have no chance. You, your body is working against you. And you're thinking now, why? I'm always in the gym. I'm doing everything right. The only thing you're doing wrong is not sleep enough. Okay? So that's my easiest way to tell you how to lose weight is to go to sleep. It's kind of funny. I'm not sending you to the gym. I'm sending you to the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll join, no. <laughs> well, and then we have 100,000 people dying on the street because they fall asleep, and half of those are our children. So, I mean, this is a serious problem, right? And sleep disorders today, what they did here, they took 100 um, different studies, 150, all over the world after we had this pandemic. We're still in it. We just heard a very per famous person has now this pandemic disease. But they looked all over the world and had these surveys to see how many people have problems because of the pandemic with sleep, just with sleep. And they found that depending on the location, anywhere between 30 and 80% have problems with sleep after they got this virus. I can tell you it's true because I got it. After three days being sick, my sleep was gone. I became an insomniac. And I have been working very, very hard on myself, and I will show you what I'm doing, very, very hard to get this sleep back. It's very, very difficult. And I'm sure there's plenty of you here and plenty of you watching that have exactly that same problem since that pandemic started. So lack of sleep leads to lack of brain. Now, we talked today a lot about smelling and brain, but now I need to talk about sleeping and brain. You sleep less than seven, eight hours, your brain starts to shrink. And that's the upper picture there. It shows the areas where your brain is shrinking. So not enough sleep means brain goes away. The lower picture, they looked at depression. 
And they found the less you sleep, the more depression you have. So sleep is not just you know, associated with your body and body weight and health, it's also associated very, very closely with your mental health and depression. In this picture, you see like some red and yellow areas. So here we're not looking into the brain, we're just looking at the brain. And these are the areas that disappear when you don't sleep enough. These are exactly the areas we need to process memory at night. And so no wonder you have lack of memory, you have trouble finding names and things like that the next day after you don't sleep. You remember, right? I'm sure everybody has a bad night of sleep and the next day not only are you cranky, but you also have less memory and you don't recognize the names of people and that's the reason. So again, healthy adults with short sleep duration have a lot of brain problems. I think you got the message, right? It is study after study after study showing the same thing. And I just want to show you the entirety of symptoms you're going to get from lack of sleep. And you can read them with me, right? You, you're cranky, you, you're irritable, you have symptoms like HDHD, you cannot concentrate or you concentrate too much and then you're gone the next moment. You have impaired judgment when you don't sleep. I mean, don't sign the checks next day. You're going to sign too much away. You're going to have depression. We just talked about it. We saw that, right? Depression goes up like crazy. Um, you're going to have increased risk of heart disease just from lack of sleep. You're going to feel cold. You're going to have thyroid disease. You're going to have compromised immune system. Why do you think that famous person right now probably has this pandemic disease? Because that person was running around like a headless chicken probably. Maybe not a big difference, but anyway, it's just my judgment. But, but you know, if you don't sleep and you, you don't rest in between, your immune system goes down and you just, you know, being attacked, but whatever happens. You have memory issues, you have cognitive impairment, you have even hallucinations, right? You have weight gain, we talked about that. You become diabetic, just some lack of sleep. You have pain. So if you're a pain patient, instead of taking more and more and more pain medication and more and more whatever you put on, go sleep, it helps with your pain. And then today, very unfortunate, we have all these addictions. Lack of sleep leads to addictions. So, uh, you know, it's terrible. So let's talk about sleep architecture. We touched that a little bit um, this afternoon, and I want to go a little bit more into detail so you understand. So we have things called non-REM sleep, and I'm going to explain to you what REM means, but non-REM means you're not in REM. And we have different stages, right? Non-REM one is when you slowly, slowly go into sleep, and you finally start kind of, you know, muscles are sort of getting a little more quiet and you just kind of get a little bit more, you know, just going away. Then you go into non-REM 2. The brain waves do change. We showed you that today on the big screen, right? You get uh, brain waves that are way slower. You, your heart slows down, your temperature comes down. And then you go into this very, very deep sleep we call non-REM 3 or low wave or slow wave sleep. And that's the one that is absolutely necessary to have for multiple functions. So that's where a lot of stuff happens. In the lighter stages, non-REM 1, non-REM 2, a lot of stuff happens with your memory. In the lower stages, the slow or low wave sleep, or we call it also delta waves, that's where a lot of detox happen in your brain. And so when we look at REM, and now I can tell you what that means, it means rapid eye movement. So when you dream, your eyes go all over the place, right? And that's why we call this rapid eye movement. And when you sleep deeper, then you have non-REM, non-rapid eye movement. So that means you're coming up and you're almost waking up. And sometimes you do, right? You remember you were dreaming something and you just woke up because you're almost at that limit where you start waking up. That's what we call REM sleep. And REM sleep is your dreaming, but REM sleep is also very important to work through the memories of the day until you make your brain get that into your long, you know, short storage or immediate storage and then into the long storage of your brain. So we in total have 
basically three REM, non-REM sleeps, one REM sleep stage, and then we have a falling asleep. So depending on what book on sleep you read, there may be four or five phases of sleep, and we call this sleep architecture. And so here you see how that looks like. Um, the more on the upper picture, the more dark blue you, uh, you have, the more you're in the light sleep. And the light blue means you're in REM. You're still sleeping, but you're dreaming, right? And it's really, really important. You go to about four or five of these waves during the night. So you go all the way deep, you come back up, you do the dreaming, you go all the way deep, and then you come back up about four or five times. And each of these cycles lasts about 90 to 120 minutes, up to two hours. And when you disturb any of these phases, you have problems. Right? And so, yeah, typical person goes to four to size uh, cycles. Early in the night, you have more of this non-REM sleep. Later in the night and in the morning, you have more of this REM sleep, and then you wake up. And very often when you wake up, you say, ah, oh, I just dreamed about this, right? And then if you don't write it down, you forget again. Yeah. So that's how the sleep architecture. Now this, of course, is a really great slide. And I'm going to test every one of you with a written test when you go out of here. And we're not going to let you out if you cannot repeat all that. Well, the reason I'm showing you that is not that you read all this. I just want to tell you that sleep is really, really complicated. And a lot of people, when I talk to them about sleep, they say, yeah, I have a sleep center somewhere. And if that is disturbed, it doesn't work and I don't sleep. No, that's not the way it goes. You see, all these places have a role in whether you awake or you sleep and what stage of sleep you're in. And it's like an orchestra, right? If one player doesn't do right, it sounds terrible. Same thing here. If one of these places doesn't play right, you don't sleep and you have problems. So good sleep is really, really essential for your health. Absolutely essential. And we talked about this afternoon about the lymphatic system. So why do we suddenly go from sleep to the lymphatic system? Well, what is the lymphatic system? Here you see kind of a drawing, a picture, and we see the heart in the middle, and it gets blood with oxygen from the lung and then pushes the blood out with the oxygen around your body. And then the blood vessels get smaller and smaller and smaller as the blood goes out into your skin, into your liver, wherever it goes. And then comes a point where it unloads, for example, the oxygen. And it takes up, for example, the carbon dioxide, the CO2 that has been produced during metabolism. And then it goes back on the blue side, these we, we call these veins, the red side we call arteries, and then it goes back to the lung, loads back up with the oxygen, and the whole cycle starts. But in these little, little, little blood vessels, we call those capillaries. There is also an exchange between fluids. Fluid from the blood we call plasma will go into the tissue or go back into these uh, veins. And if that doesn't work very well, if you don't balance that, you have swollen legs, for example, big swelling. That means your lymphatic flow is not catching up. And the lymphatic flow has its own vessel. We call these lymphatic vessels and has its own control stations. We call those lymph nodes. So when you're sick, what do these stations do? They filter. They filter the viruses, whatever floats around and doesn't belong into your blood. And this is when you like, have a cold, you have swollen lymph nodes in your neck. Or if you have a problem in the leg, you have swollen lymph node in, you know, somewhere here and maybe inside your belly. So this is what the lymphatic system does. It detoxes your body. Right? So the big question is, and, and on, not just does it remove waste, it also does some stuff in the gut. It absorbs some things like fats and proteins and hormones also. So it's a really important system, but really for this talk, I want to concentrate on the detox, the detoxification, right? So do we have the same thing in the brain? And the answer we know since about 12 years is yes. We have a lymphatic system we didn't know until 12 years ago, we have one in the brain. And because it's formed by cells in the brain, we call glia cells, we call this not lymphatic system, we call this glymphatic system with the G for glia. 
Okay? So, and this is what happens when you sleep very well. This does not happen when you just fall asleep in the early stages. Non-REM 1, non-REM 2 has nothing to do with detox. You need to be in the deepest of the deepest of the sleep for this system to kick on and start detoxing your brain. So again, the, the, the lymphatic system is a waste clearance system. Again, I told you it's most active in this very deep sleep. And during this deep sleep, what happens is we have fluid in the brain and in the spinal cord. We call it CSF or cerebro for brain, spine, spinal for spine, fluid, CSF. And that fluid is created in the brain. And when we go to very deep sleep, your brain shrinks. We didn't know that until about 10 years ago. So your brain shrinks a little bit and produces more of this fluid, CSF. And now you have all these arteries that are pumping blood, right? When we feel the, the pulse, like here, or like here, or like here, wherever you feel the pulse, that's your arteries beating. And when the brain shrinks, the resistance for these arteries goes away and then can pulse it much more. And that is a propulsion, like a motor, for this fluid to go like big waves, right? And so here, it's just like a study showing, explaining one of the first studies that looked at this glymphatic system. It came out, I mean, the whole research came out of University of Rochester. But um, it's just to explain to you again that these are astroglial cells that are involved, and that's why we call it the glymphatic system. And here are some nice pictures, right? You see it's coming around the arteries. So you see all these colors? That's junk, right? And so they measure that stuff. And then you see on the other picture, like in red, and then almost nothing. The red is the junk that's being transported away when you're in deep sleep. And when you awake, that doesn't happen. You see this in this picture pretty clearly. So here we took this original research, they did some cuts digitally, but what I want you to concentrate is on the third column there where you see a red artery going down into the brain tissue. And then all the way at the bottom, you see a little square, and that square we magnify and get this big picture with the red and blue on, on, on both sides and then the green in the middle. So the red is the artery, it's the one that is pulsating. And the deeper you sleep, the more it can pulsate, in other words, the more fluid it can push. And you see it's pushing towards the blue, the vein, and there's also lymphatic vessels. And you see those little dots there? This is crap. This is junk. These are proteins that make you dement, make you Alzheimer. We call it tau protein, amyloid beta, all kind of proteins and junk. And these waves come like one wave after the other when you're in deep sleep and it flushes that stuff out and then goes either into the veins or goes back into lymphatic vessels that then come back in the neck, back into the veins. And then it goes to the liver with the blood and to kidney and this is how you urinate those out or your liver is detoxing. And that only happens during deep sleep. So again, this the, the lymphatic system is really required for you to get rid of your brain waste. And the thing here is really, when you have one night where you don't sleep well, and then you go sleep very, very well, night two and night three and night four, you're not catching up. That junk that didn't go away that night you didn't sleep, that's there to stay. And it will accumulate. Accumulate day after day after day after week after week after months after months after year after year. And this is why you get dement and why you get Alzheimer and all kinds of other diseases. In other words, you cannot even catch up with lost sleep. So sleep is a really, it's a treasure. It's a very valuable resource that you should not waste it. Here it's quite interesting. Again, I like the visuals. So let's look first at the middle one, three pictures next to each other. That's a person who sleeps well and you see those bright colors, fluorescent colors, that's junk. And you see a normal person still has junk in it, but it's okay. Then you look at the first line, that is a person that is sleep deprived, not enough sleep. You see how much more junk there is? And if you don't see it, they did it for you. The lowest line just takes the difference. And that's what basically stays behind. And you see how much there is. 
right? So if you are sleep deprived, all that stuff down there, that stays back in your brain and will accumulate over the years and make you really bad. So imagine deep sleep, no resistance for these waves of this fluid you have in the brain, and like tsunamis, it takes away all the garbage bags that are on the street. And if you do not sleep, you don't have these waves, and the garbage bags accumulate until the street is blocked, and then nothing goes, and the same for your brain. Now let's talk a little about some other things, sleep and body weight, right? I told you, one night of missed sleep makes a healthy person pre-diabetic. Diabetes, if you don't sleep, you're going to get diabetes sooner or later, no question. And when you have a lack of sleep, you eat the wrong stuff during the day because you're tired, you need more energy, you eat more sugar, you eat more fats, and then you gain more weight, and the weight doesn't help you sleep, and so it's a vicious cycle. The other problem is with memory. We talked a lot about when you don't sleep, you have lack of memory. Well, I was telling you today, inside the brain, I showed you pictures of areas that are shrinking when you don't sleep enough. But memory has to do with these early stages of sleep, we call non-REM1 and non-REM2, and it's mostly done outside. So your outside, which you see up there, is starting to shrink. And when you have, when you, I think probably everyone here knows somebody with dementia or Alzheimer's, and those people will keep on asking you short-term things, like, they will ask the same question every five minutes, right? And they say, oh, I just told you five minutes ago. Oh, I just told you five minutes ago. It's because the short-term memory is the first one to suffer. And if you do deep sleep, sometimes the short-term memory will go way deeper, and then these people suddenly have like the aha moment that they will tell you, oh, 40 years ago, I had this car and this engine and it worked. And you say, hallelujah, the person is now better. No, it just meant that it, that person was able to retrieve something that had been stored long ago, but sooner or later that will go too, right? So that's kind of the, the stuff that happens when you get dementia and Alzheimer's, things like that. And this is what just happened to the famous person, right? Immune system goes down. If you don't sleep enough and you have too much stress, your immune system suffers. And, you know, we, we have been told we all should vaccinate and all that, but no one told you that you should sleep before and after vaccination. No one told you that when you have too much body weight that the vaccination is effectively only in 50% or so. So these are the things, right, that we should tell the people that they understand. I'm not here to be pro or con vaccines. I'm just here is if you take the vaccine, at least make it sure it works. And for that, you need to eat correctly and you need to sleep correctly. Emotions, of course, if you don't sleep, you have bad emotions. If you have bad emotions, you don't sleep, right? It's a vicious cycle. And so it's really, really important for you to sleep well because all these mental diseases we have, especially since the pandemic started, we have probably right now 60% of female teenagers and young women that have mental issues, and men as well, but especially the women. Um, they're worrying, they don't sleep, and they watch too, you know, TV, all the bad news, and then they worry again, and they sleep less, and then they have bad emotions. It just doesn't help. So, we did a ninja rat study at Young Living. I don't know if you know. That was a study that was registered with the agency, National Institute of Health, and a third party analyzed the results. And one of the results was 21 minutes more sleep. Well, you might think that's not that much, but I just told you the difference between an A student and a B student is 15 minutes of sleep. 21 minutes is highly, highly significant because that means 21 minutes more waste removal. That means 21 minutes more memory consolidation and fortifying. And so when we looked at the study, we found that those people who not uh, you know, we had two groups. One took Ninja Red, the other one took Red Water. And so those who took Ninja Red had 35% more energy, had 36% less pain when they walked around because they had more energy, right? It all goes hand in hand. They also had less mental issues. 21 minute difference in one night when you do these kind of things. So I hope you do your daily ninja rat, because that's what it showed. So how do you evaluate sleep? I need to go a little fast, right? So you can just put a computer laptop over your head and see if something registers, probably not. Or you can go into a very elaborate sleep laboratory 
But what I like to do is a sleep diary. Sleep diary, you can download that at the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. And I filled one out for you, Beaks of Sleep Diary. And there's a little approbation. Whenever the field is crossed out, it means you were sleeping. Uh, a C means you were doing something on the computer. A P means you were doing something on the phone. TV is kind of clear. You watch TV. The A means you had a little alcohol to help you sleep. And then M, maybe you took some medication. And we can already look at these um, pictures and we can say on the first line, that person was sleeping in the afternoon, took a nap from four to seven. I mean, how do you expect that person to sleep well? And then when that person woke up, I mean, I put everything in that first line so I don't have to go all over the chart, right? Then that person st started watching TV and went to the computer and did some on the iPad and watched on the iPhone. All blue light, all disrupting your sleep later on. And then when it was time to sleep, maybe a glass of red wine, right? Because it slows you down and it's all good. Yeah, alcohol helps you to fall asleep. But what you didn't know, four or five hours later, alcohol will wake you up. It destroys your sleep architecture. So kind of that's what these kind of say. So you figure out a lot of things by doing something like that. So when it comes to sleep hygiene, and that's where you need to start, right? Take away the computers, the TVs, the iPads, the iPhone, whatever phone you use. All of that is blue light. If you have a phone or a computer, go into the settings and put it to night setting or make it yellow, right? So that the blue light goes away. Because our body produces melatonin, right? You know, have heard the name, you can buy it everywhere. Melatonin is produced in the brain and helps you sleep. Now, there's 400 more times melatonin produced in the gut, but we're not quite sure yet. The research is not there yet to see if it will go up to the brain or has another function, such as, for example, longevity. I mean, there's a lot of things we're looking at. But this is clearly way too much blue light, right? It's all from these devices. It decreases your melatonin. It disrupts your sleep. And here comes the little nightcap, right? Little red wine or little cocktail, whatever you want to do. Yeah, you're going to fall asleep faster, but four or five hours later, the metabolites from the alcohol will wake you up. It will destroy your sleep architecture. It will never really get into the deep sleep where you detox. So the garbage will accumulate when you do this kind of stuff. And then your memory next day will be not as good. And it will just keep on accumulating, accumulating. And that's what you see with people who drink too much alcohol, especially at night. They're going to get worse and worse with their brain. So you need to stop drinking alcohol if you want to sleep about four or five hours before you go to sleep. And now you don't have enough sleep, so what do you do in the afternoon? Yeah, sure, an energy drink. Or you go and um, take a cafe latte, right, a grande. That's 260 milligrams of caffeine. Yo, here you go. Well, the half time, which means the time it takes to get rid of half the caffeine is six hours. So let's imagine you take your energy or your coffee grande at three or four in the afternoon, because that's when you're like this, right? And now you're up. Well, guess what? By midnight, you still have the equivalent of a full energy drink in your blood. How do you want to sleep that way? So there, will be, there should be no caffeinated drinks with high caffeine content afternoon or after one o'clock, because otherwise you have just no chance. You're going to lose. Now, the good news is we have things like lavender. Lavender, fantastic. The smell, so the research, there's plenty of research, shows that you're going to sleep better, you're going to sleep longer, you're going to sleep deeper, you're going to detox better. It's, I mean, you should not sleep without any of these things that we have at Young Living. And that's what I do. I turn off at least an hour before I go to bed. I turn off everything. Right? There is no computer, there is no phone, not last, oh, I need to check the last news. No, I had to force myself. I'm a junkie like that. I always want to know what's going on. Right? So you have to force yourself. You need a yellow light. You need a book. I, what I do, I listen to music for about a half an hour to an hour before I go to sleep. That forces me to go away from all this blue light that destroys my sleep. And luckily, we at Young Living, right, we have these oils, Stress Away, Lavender, um, Bergamot, Ylang Ylang, I mean, all these oils. And I showed this earlier today. We call this smell enrichment or olfactory enrichment. This was a study where they took 
all the people, I mean, 60 to 85, and half of them got an aroma diffuser with the essential oil, and half of them got an aroma diffuser with water. And then they made a big test with them, and then they made them smell for two hours when they went to bed, they made them smell either water or essential oil. And then they repeated that test. The blue line is those who got water. Yeah, blue for water, makes sense, right? They declined even more. Age, they got elder, uh, elder, yeah, and, and declined more. The red line is those who got the aromatherapy with the essential oils. They increased their memory, their cognitive uh, abilities, um, all the things they were doing. And the difference was a whopping 226% with just two hour aromatherapy at night. No one of you should ever go to bed without an aroma diffuser running. And I understand, after five, 10 minutes, you don't smell the lavender anymore. Your olfactory cells are overexcited. That's why a dog that smells a rabbit will never go straight after the rabbit. It will zigzag. It will go here, smell it, lose it, recover the smell, back, and doom, 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 until it get it, right? So the same thing will happen to you, but your brain still functions and enjoys it, right? And so olfactory enrichment is extremely important. All of you should sleep with aroma. Whether you smell it or not, your brain will grow and help. And so I can just put it together. Do you see this little, little brain there? That's the one you're gonna get from the big brain to the small brain if you don't sleep. There's just no way around it. You're gonna shrink your brain and you're gonna be toast. And if you sleep well, you have health and longevity. And with that, I wish you 90 night. And these are the two new products that Young Living put out this year to help you with that sleep. Thank you so much, every one of you all at home. Thank you so much for listening. Appreciate it.